Welcome, friends of the Greasy Shop Rag. Today we're going to take a look at an Echo CS, what is it, a 4910 chainsaw? Looks like the customer used it as a wheel chock or something, eh? It's all busted up. It's going to need a new fuel tank. Luckily for him, we happen to have a brand new fuel tank right here. Unfortunately, when you buy an Echo fuel tank, it comes as a bare bones tank. And the trigger assembly isn't, you know, assembled. So there's another 15 pieces here that come along with the deal. So let's get started on this. Boy, look at all that precious fuel in there, hey. Price of gas is killing me. I uh, finally got approved for a loan at the bank. Uh, luckily, next week I'll be able to close on uh, a full tank of fuel for my truck. So the first thing we're going to do here is uh, remove the handle. I don't know why, but the fifth screw on here is got a different head than the other four screws that hold the handle on. It just seems to me that uh, bad engineering. I like echo chainsaws, but come on. Why can't we make things a little bit more universal for the tech that's working on them? All right, these echo saws use a rubber isolation dampener, anti-vibe mount, whatever you want to call it. And they work good. They seem to hold up fairly decent. So the other day a customer walks in, he's got his chainsaw with him, and uh, it's an older model, but he wanted to trade in value on it, you know, no problem, we take saws in on trade every day, no big deal. But I did have to ask him if it had a full tank of fuel or not, because that would definitely affect the, uh, the amount of money I was willing to give him. Alright, we're going to use a manual handle to extract these dampener screws. It's barbaric, I know. Speaking of high fuel prices, uh, I was able to get gas today for a dollar eighty-nine, and all right. Unfortunately, it was at the local taco stand. at the taco stand. That's actually a really good joke. Okay, look at that. We got the fuel tank off. Now that the tank's off, we can swap some of the, uh, the parts that are salvageable from this tank to the new one. We need the tank vent assembly. And there we've reattached it. And we're going to salvage the fuel hoses. This saw isn't that old. The hoses are in good shape. And there happens to be a lot of parts to these fuel hose assemblies. I don't know. I'm, most of the saws I work on are Husqvarna. Fuel hoses tend to be one piece. Well, by golly, there's got to be one, two, three, at least four pieces to this fuel pickup line. And it's not just a standard hose either. either. It's a, a fitted or a formed hose. Preformed hose? Can't be a post-formed hose. 
So we get the line in the tank, get the grommet end of it snapped in place. We're going to slap our old fuel filter on there because it really wasn't that bad. And then uh, the other last two pieces of the puzzle for the fuel line. I think we've reached the halfway point on this repair. We're going to fit the fuel line onto the carburetor. Bam, just like that. And then we're going to start putting together some of these anti-vibe mounts. How do you double the value of a Remington chainsaw? You fill it with fuel. At least that's the case these days. So we're, um, what are we on? Mount number two? We'll get the, catch the mount on the other side. This little plastic cap's gotta be snapped in there. It kind of holds the shape of the rubber mount so it doesn't pop out of the plastic housing yeah I don't know how that guy wrecked this saw I didn't I didn't hear the end of the conversation if it was if he dropped it or what we did have a guy walk in the other day with kind of holding pieces of a saw and uh, you know I says, what do you got there? Well, that was kind of a where's your sign kind of moment, but he said, uh, wheel chalk. <laughs> Apparently one of his workers backed over it with the lift or something like that. It's unfortunate because it was a not that old 562 XP. So stay tuned for a video on replacing a fuel tank and top cover on one of those. Alright, we're going to put a little Loctite on these uh, felling dogs because they seem to always come loose. I don't remember if these screws were coated with Loctite or not, but they are now. You know, as far as uh, fuel tank swaps go, this one's not that bad. It is going to get a little bit more involved when we get to the trigger. Not that it's complicated, but uh, when you take something apart and you can look at it, it's easy to put it back together. When it comes to you smashed and you don't have most of the parts and you have to put it together for the first time from scratch it's a little bit more interesting makes it a little bit more of a challenge okay we're putting the handle back on got four to five screws in place that damn fifth screw uses a different size fastener. We'll bar it up. This guy's fast. Wow. So there's the trigger assembly. It's got a spring on it. And then we got a pin that holds it in place. Pretty simple. Nothing complicated about that. When you pull the trigger, it just pushes on that throttle linkage, pushes it forward. It's not even connected to it. Simple stuff right there. This is the operator presence lever. drop a pin in it and it's got a couple of saddles that that pin sits in pretty simple stuff
There's a spring underneath it that holds it up. Then we put the top cover on. Look at that. Pretty easy. We do have to put a bottom cover on it as well. Let's go! Dinking around. Here's our bottom cover. And that'll kind of snap into place when, when it's right. It'll all snap in, be flush, and feel right when it's in the right place. And then there's one screw that just holds that all together. Bam, this guy's fast. Do a little function check on our trigger, make sure that it's not going to hang on us. That would be a bummer. Probably a dangerous. Then we'll slap it all together and put some fuel in it and see if it runs. So that's all I got for you on the Echo CS4910 fuel tank swap. Thanks for watching. Later. Come on, make it go vroom.